The world is upside down. How should we put it back together? Are we able to act responsibly? Can we work together, play by the rules, and restore solidarity? Let's use this crisis as an opportunity. A new world emerging? Watch the online forum 2000 conference, October 12th to 14th. You're watching the Václav Havel Human Rights Dialogues. The topic today is women's rights in the times of crisis, brought to you on the Havel channel, and I'm Michael Zantowski in the Václav Havel Library. This panel is taking place in cooperation with our friends from the Forum 2000 Foundation uh, and for the Forum 2000 Conference, uh, this year inevitably also online. <coughs> Uh, the work of the Václav Havel Library can continue in these difficult times thanks to the support of our sponsors, the Bacala Philanthropy, the sponsors of the Havel Channel, the Komarek Family Foundation, and the sponsors of the Václav Havel Human Rights Dialogues, the Secura Foundation. We appreciate your support. Thank you. I am much awed and not a little humbled uh, to be hosting this panel today on the women's rights in the times of crisis by three formidable women. The former U.S. Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, the presidential candidate and the leader of the Belarusian opposition, Sviatlana Cichanowska, and the brilliant Polish sociologist and journalist, Carolina Vigura. Hello and thank you for joining me. Really great to be with you. Thank you, Madeleine. Thank you, Svetlana. And thank you, Carolina. Now, let's start with the topic. The fog of pandemics is obscuring developments on the ground in large parts of the globe at the moment. The world is much smaller. We don't really know what is happening everywhere. We are thus running the double risk of ignoring progress and achievements in some countries and being blind to new violations of human rights in others. The two opening questions for all of you then. How are women's rights faring at this time of the crisis in your country and in the world at large? And is there a specific role for women in this battle to save our way of life? And if so, what it is? Madeleine? Well, um, I'm very glad to be a part of this discussion because the role of women um, is always important, but I think especially important now. I do think that uh, something that should be noted is the countries that are run by women at the moment are those that are dealing with the virus. New Zealand and Taiwan and uh, Germany and the northern countries. And I really do think it is because we have the capability of governing and caring about what happens to the people. I do think that uh, the issue of women's rights in the United States is always out there. Uh, and there have been women's marches there are women that have been elected to office, and we now have, again, a woman candidate on the national ticket uh, with Kamala Harris as candidate for vice president. And so um, Senator Bi Vice President Biden 
is making very clear that women's issues and women's rights are a part of what he wants to uh, spend time on and focus on when he becomes president. Well, this is a very rosy picture and I expected nothing less from you, but how is the situation in other places? Uh, Svetlana? Oh, you know, uh, uh, at the moment I look at uh, women, um, I have to look at women only from the point of view of uh, uh, the situation in, in my country. And as you know, um, in this political crisis that uh, in Belarus now, uh, Belarusian women showed themselves as unique um, as unique people, because uh, we have never uh, played huge role in politics and uh, in country at all. But now at the moment we see that uh, our fights, our protests, our demonstrations have uh, women face, because our women now, they are uh, beside our men or even in front of them, they just uh, have uh, necessity to stand instead of uh, our men because our men are brutally beaten in our country and uh, women later were not uh, touched by right police. But at, at this uh, real moment, women's rights are under threat uh, uh, in Belarus the same way as everyone else's because women started to be beaten by uh, police in the same extent as men and uh, everyone else. So uh, for Belarusian right police, men are absolutely equal to women uh, into, from this point of view. But uh, I'm sure that, um, you know, in the future, in, in free and safe Belarus, women will have a much uh, bigger role for country than it uh, was uh, before. Thank you. Thank you, Svetlana. This is, you know, a very peculiar kind of equality, equality of being beaten. It's, uh, it's, it's a sad, uh, sad aspect of the situation in your country. Uh, and how are women faring in, 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 in Poland and uh, Karolina? I'm afraid... Oh, I'm sorry, I was yeah. muted once All again. Right. Um, You're yeah, on. Thank you very much, Miha, and th thank you, Madeline and Svetlana. It's really, uh, I'm really delighted to be here. Um, well, you asked about the pandemic, um, but I do believe that the pandemic is uh, a catalyst at most. So if it changes anything, it only makes things that were already present before uh, more uh, visible. That's all. That's, uh, that's uh, it as for what the pandemic actually changes. But uh, speaking from the point of view of an, uh, an illiberal democracy, which uh, Poland uh, currently is, I would like to speak about two phenomena. First phenomena I would call uh, a, a rising moral panic. Uh, the, the illiberals, uh, both in Poland but also in, in Hungary, uh, have been trying to play on uh, women's rights issues, like for example the abortion rights, for quite some time now. Many feminists and people who do care for women's rights ask whether, for example, in Poland we will be witnessing a total abortion ban. But my argument is that it is uh, th those uh, cultural wars are not led in order to provide a ban. They are actually led in order to cause more moral panic and within the feminist movement and within the, the female politicians, exhaustion and also radicalization because many, many women, when they, uh, when they see this spectacle of, of, uh, of uh, uh, diminishing women's rights, they, they, at the very beginning, they protest and then they slightly, slightly go more and more exhausted and only the more radical stay with, the, with, the, with um, defending women's rights. And this is ex extremely important because this allows illiberals to show with finger and say, see, the women's rights are only defended by radicals. So this is one phenomenon. The second phenomenon is what I would call hijacking feminism. 
namely when the law and justice came to power in 2015 they came up with a female uh, um, prime minister uh, Ms. Beata Szydło so everybody right. said okay so those illiberal populists they are actually also uh, they have these feminist ideals but in fact feminism here is used only in a very instrumental way so I do believe that those two phenomena are something which is not only Polish, it is also global. So you can see very important behaviors, very important, uh, very, very similar uh, behaviors and strategies used by Viktor Orban or Donald Trump as, uh, as an example. And I do believe that we have to be aware of this and it, it, it needs developing new strategies of Open, uh, opposing illiberal populism. And I do believe that women, exactly with those competencies about which Madeleine said, she spoke about caring, and I would say also empathy. Those competencies are crucial in the world as fast changing as the world that we are living in today. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you brought uh, the level of the debate down a little from the political level to, to, to the human uh, level. And I would like to focus on this now. Uh, it's, I think, a general feature of the pandemics that uh, the vulnerable groups, the people who are isolated, live alone, are uh, the ones most threatened by, uh, by the virus and its uh, consequences. In the Czech Republic, self-supporting mothers are identified as one of the most threatened groups in terms of uh, the impact of the pandemics. Uh, has it uh, specifically impacted the situation in your country as well, in your countries as well? This is for all three of you. Uh, Michael, if I could, you thought I was too optimistic. Uh, let me just say that um, Carolina's assessment of things is very important. Uh, and it's important in the United States because we are, uh, and there are any number of reasons that this election is important, uh, has to do with the issue of, um, of uh, the family planning and the kinds of things that are going to happen probably with the Supreme Court. And so it is very much a subject of discussion. But to your current question is I do think that we know that in many ways the virus uh, and the situation around it has impacted women the most uh, because they are the chief caregiver in their home. They also, uh, many of them have uh, jobs which under normal circumstances would take them away from their home and their children to school. And at the moment they have to do everything uh, all at once. And so they are very much uh, victims in many ways as being the last group of people that are, are really cared about enough. And therefore, it is very important as we've seen some of the marches and some of the discussions uh, politically that in fact, it is a time to recognize the fact that women are bearing the brunt of many aspects of the virus. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back to, to the achievements. You've already mentioned, Madeleine, the high posts that uh, women are occupying in a number of countries. Uh, nearby, for the first time in history, we have a woman in the top post in Slovakia. Uh, women politicians rule uh, much of the north of Europe and uh, a woman chairs the European Commission. And a woman leads the struggle against dictatorship in Belarus. So can we say that the glass ceiling in politics has finally been broken? Well, I really hope it has, uh, but I think uh, it's very hard to mend glass. But I think one of the things that has to happen is we can't just kind of sit and think that this will be like this because we've gone backwards a number of times. And therefore, having um, real uh, sisterhood in many ways of being able to support each other is something that is very important. I also do think, and you are a perfect example of this, is we need the help of men that understand the issue 
uh, and want to live in societies that understand the importance of equality uh, and working together. And so uh, I do think women are incredibly capable of dealing with various issues. Um, and I think we need to support each other in every way that we can with your help. Uh, I'll be happy to help. Uh, uh, in the recent protests, women played a crucial role, as we already said, uh, not just in, in the US, but also in Hong Kong, now in Belarus and elsewhere. You, Svetlana, are currently heading the political opposition in the country and you're facing an authoritarian ruler who's not known for uh, his understanding of uh, feminist views. Uh, is your gender a help in this confrontation? Is it to your advantage or, or does it work against you? Oh, you know, it's rather difficult question because at the beginning of this election campaign, um, I think that uh, the fact that I'm a female played, uh, um, you know, like a strange role for our country because I wasn't accepted as a strong uh, opposition partner for this regime. And they allowed me to participate in this election campaign because they were sure that nobody in our country will uh, go after women. And uh, our uh, president at the time told that our constitution, Belarusian constitution, is not for women. You know, he like humiliated a uh, meaning of women in, in, in um, our country and of course I was a housewife uh, and nobody um, nobody couldn't even imagine that people would vote for a housewife who wasn't in, politic, uh, in politics uh, even one day but uh, it's like my fate uh, at that moment and, and now and uh, it's because Belarusian people were sick and tired of this regime of this uh, uh, of this dictatorship uh, and uh, maybe even because I was woman and I wasn't the only woman uh, we, there were three of us and we like we, we were like a team of women and Belarus and people believed us believed me that we um, you know we, we, we were like symbols of freedom of future Belarus and uh, Maybe the fact that I never strived for power and I declared this, that uh, I, I will be uh, leading country, if, if just it happens, I will be leading country for a couple of months just to prepare new, um, new elections, fair and transparent, and then you will be able to choose new president. I suppose it will be a man uh, for future uh, safe and free Belarus. That's why people um, believed me because I, I, I was open and my comrades were opened as well. So, um, but as for, uh, uh, you know, uh, there are no, not a lot of women in, in Belarusian politics at the moment because we are not allowed, we uh, always were like at the lower level uh, for our men in our country. But uh, in future Belarus, uh, I'm sure women will play uh, the same role in politics and all the spheres of life in, uh, uh, you know, alongside with men. Yeah, it's always very encouraging to speak to the future. Uh, now, uh, one step back, Carolina, you've already mentioned the, the freedom of choice uh, issue. And if I understand you correctly, you saying that the feeling of vulnerability uh, among in the society contributes to the moral panic, which uh, then uh, uh, which then goes against liberal freedoms like uh, freedom of choice. Is, is, is that the correct description of the situation? And how can we 
overcome it? I would like to answer your question, but first I will refer to what Svetlana said. Uh, we both come from Central and Eastern Europe, so uh, Lenin um, um, <laughs> had made a, a mark uh, on our biographies and also on our region. And I, I, when I was listening to you, Svetlana, I thought uh, that when you mentioned that, uh, that uh, Lukashenko tried to humiliate you because you were um, a housewife, I thought about Lenin and his famous statement that in the future politics will be led by a female cook. Well, history proved Lenin wrong for many, many reasons, but at least in one respect, he, uh, he Per, per, perhaps was right, uh, namely that the political talent and political leadership does not have to come together with, with being a profes professional politician. And uh, I do believe that there are some competencies uh, that are more important than being from the beginning a professional politician. And having said that, I would like to stress that we, um, Feminism is, is, is um, a philosophy, a way of thinking that has been developed for, for decades and actually for centuries now. But uh, having all this theoretic thinking, we are in a time which makes us uh, needing role models. And I do believe that, that, that Modeling and Sotwana are exactly the kind of role models we actually need today. But coming back to your question, Michal, um, what I wanted to describe is a kind of vicious circle that uh, feminist uh, po uh, politicians are being uh, pulled into in my country. And I do believe that it's not only in my country, I do believe this has a very global aspect when you talk about illiberal populism. Namely, um, the, the, the women's rights are either diminished or decreased or there, there is a lot of talk about uh, doing it, like with the example of the abortion ban, which calls them to action, of course. And this is very good so, and I respect very much people who, pro pro who protest. What I was trying to say, and I would like to be understand, understood very clearly, is that whilst protesting, we have to be aware of the, the fact that this is also a game uh, a game led by po populist politicians which want, who want the, the feminist activists and also female politicians look radical. So my answer to that is uh, that we basically need uh, new competencies and new creative methods of, of doing politics, basically. And I, and I do believe that many, many women have exactly those competencies because of their social roles. So I do believe this new type of political leadership is connected with uh, changing loss and fear into um, empathy, into uh, cre creativity, uh, and, and into responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, th this brings a whole new set of competencies uh, that we should bring back into politics, because somehow, during the past decades, we have lost those. Mm -hmm. So we're talking here about strategies, about competencies, uh, in a way also about diplomacy. And, uh, and we have here one very experienced diplomat in, in Madeleine and uh, another emerging diplomat, Sviatlana, who's trying to negotiate a peaceful handover of power in, in her country. That's not an easy task. So, in, in, in your view, uh, friends, are women better conflict mediators than men? What exactly are you bringing to the mix other than uh, the rest of us, the half of the mankind? Well, I happen to think that there are aspects about women that make us uh, better at trying to find uh, to mediate and solutions. First of all, I do think that women, um, uh, we know how to multitask, to do many things at the same time, which makes us have peripheral vision. Uh, we can understand the variety of problems that are out there and how one affects another. We also are caregivers and care in terms of how people get along and also do not do what we're seeing many men do now, especially the authoritarian ones, of trying to, to divide us 
so that uh, we one group hates another. Uh, there is no woman that wants to have her children fight with each other. We are those that want to find solutions to issues. We also, I think, are not driven by our egos. We want to solve problems and not just to prove that we can uh, be smarter or talk more uh, or dominate. And then I also think the following thing, which is just a practical aspect. In every country, women are uh, at least half, if not more, of the population. And it is a waste of a resource not to have women involved in every part of social life and political life. And I uh, brought women's issues to the State Department, not just because I'm a feminist, but because it makes sense to involve women. I do think that we have the capability, better than men, of putting ourselves into somebody else's shoes uh, and to listen. I do, however, as I said earlier, think that it is important to develop partnerships with men uh, because uh, men have some qualities that are also very useful in terms of being able to think deeply about a subject uh, and to really uh, understand many of the issues that are going on. And many men truly understand that partnering with women uh, is a very smart idea. But I think that women have the capabilities and understand that women's rights are human rights and human rights are women's rights. As one of the very diplomatic and smart women, Hillary Clinton said at the Beijing Women's Conference, of which we are celebrating the 25th year in order to make sure that women are recognized for what we can do in societies. So what do you think about that, Svetlana? Well, you think uh, I look at all the problems from the point of view of Belarus and crisis at the moment. So what I can add is that uh, I'm sure that women um, uh, you know, as uh, uh, Madeline has already said, they try to solve problems. They don't put their ambitions higher than general aim, because I'm sure that in our very case, in the case of uh, uh, Belarusian elections, if at the place of true women that have united just to reach this goal, if there were men instead of women, they wouldn't unite for, for for achieving this goal they would go separately because uh, their ambitions they they would put their ambitions higher than than this goal and uh, only this you know this um, step of of you of you объединения of unification of true women played the huge role in the success of uh, um, you know of this fight for for the future of belarus and you know nobody at that moment thought about herself we just combined our um combined our strength combined our uh, intentions into one uh you know into one power and we could uh, go through these difficulties together. We didn't quarrel. We just had one aim. So uh, I'm not sure about mediation, but about uh, opportunity to agree just to achieve a uh, goal. Uh, I think we are better than men. I'm sorry. Uh, no, 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 no offense taken, please. But uh, just to give this a little more spice, uh, uh, Carolina, uh, what is the exactly the comparative advantage that the women bring uh, in you know sometimes one of the founding myths in the mythology of our country uh, the czech republic is uh, women's war so it it's a uh, mythology of women fighting other women uh, so you know we have something that uh, does not make all women uh, peaceful and and of course the antiquity is full of stories of prominent women who were not above their children fighting each other and sometimes with disastrous results so but there must be something 
uh, uh, that uh, makes you uh, nicer to deal with uh, or better at conflict resolution. So what, what, what is it? I started listening to you, Michal. I started to think about uh, Aristotle and how he, on one hand, defended a Republican uh, uh, politics, and uh, um, and at this at the same time, he was capable of saying that women should not go into politics because their reason doesn't work well. Um, but I do believe that we are uh, already past. Uh, such thinking. Uh, simply for centuries, women were not offered the same education as men, which caused them True. to act and think differently than men that were simply um, uh, um, prepared uh, for, for leadership, for example. Not always, of course, when we take into account queens, uh, in Europe, for example, but still uh, it was true for centuries, but I think we are past that. Um, I'm not a kind of feminist who thinks that women are better. To be sure, I am a kind of feminist who believes that diversity is better than the lack of the diversity. So I believe there is a, a, a fight of women and there is also a fight or war of men. If there is too many women and if there is too many men, um, what, what I believe is better for, for politics and actually what is better for political community and for democracy is simply that we do make a lot of stress, that we put a lot of stress on the fact that, that the governments, uh, that the, all the bodies that are taking, uh, taking care of, of, of leadership are simply diverse. And it is very important to understand that when this becomes instrumental, so for example, when Donald Trump is, is, is saying that he to the Supreme Court will, uh, will elect, will, will, um, uh, will propose uh, a woman. He doesn't know who this is going to be, but it will be a woman. Uh, and then he comes up with, with, with Amy Coney uh, Barrett. Uh, then I, I believe this is very instrumental and very similar to what has happened in my country uh, with uh, Ms. Shidwa. But when we do think about diversity really honestly, then it really uh, contributes to better politics. And I just wanted to make one more remark, namely, um, when uh, uh, Madeleine told us we should uh, reach out to men, then I, I'm very much um, agreeing, and I would just like to add something more. Uh, women should uh, reach out to men but progressive women, liberal women, should also reach out to conservative women. In my country, those are the Catholics, people who believe in a more traditional way the society should be structured. But in every country, this conservatism uh, means something slightly else. And I, I do believe that, that female politics is stronger when it is also diverse. Yeah. Well, uh, hooray to that, you know, I, I, liberals, conservatives, women, men, you know, to keep communicating is at the, at the bottom of it all. I mean, once we cease communicating, uh, then I'm afraid uh, we're in a, in a bad shape. Uh, and I want to come back to this issue of diversity with uh, Madeleine, the title of your recent book uh, refers to your saying that there is a special place in hell for women who, don't, who do not help support other women. Uh, but in your journey to the highest diplomatic post in your country, it would seem that equally often it was men who served as your mentors and guides and supporters. So do men also need to support women? and? and vice versa? Oh, well, definitely, but before I answer that, I would prefer to uh, remember, having been born in Prague, a different part of Czech history, and that is that the constitution of the new Czechoslovakia in 1918 
was modeled on the American Constitution with one major difference. It had equal rights for women in 1918. Uh, and so I do think that, that that's better than the, the war of the, uh, uh, the witch wars or whatever you were talking about. So we'd like to remember various parts of our background. Uh, but I, I do think that what is important uh, is uh, the diversity. And by the way, Catalina, I also do agree that we need to talk with people uh, of different views. That is the whole purpose of democracy and being able to exchange views. But I also think the following thing is that it uh, was not, when I was, when my name came up to be Secretary of State, there were people who said, uh, well, a woman couldn't be Secretary of State because Arab countries would not deal with a woman. The Arab ambassadors at the UN got together and said we had no problem talking to Ambassador Albright. We wouldn't have any problem dealing with a Secretary Albright. And so I think that uh, there's always a time that somebody has to break the mold and start. But I do think that men need to support women and women need to have partnerships with men that in fact pursue uh, liberal um, democratic traditions uh, and try to get the kind of working across lines where we might disagree with people. I found very difficult and the reason that I made my statement is that in many ways we are very hard on each other and uh, don't think that it is uh, useful to quote support other women. Uh, but I think that the point here is we need to help each other we need to recognize the traits that men and women have and working together. And I do think that the, um, and we've now all of us mentioned this, the importance of having uh, uh, societies where men and women can work together in order to make the uh, societies better for everybody. But it's not simple. And by the way, I would not vote for a woman that I totally disagreed with. But I do think it's important to understand that uh, we need to respect each other and try to find out what the differences are. Uh, and remember that equal rights are very, are the es essence of a democracy. Yeah. Well, you, you've both now mentioned the more traditional attitudes that uh, exist in, in parts of the societies in, in Poland, in, in the United States. Uh, would I be much wrong in thinking, Svetlana, that you know, these attitudes are even more prevalent in uh, the part, in your part of Europe and in, in Russia and uh, in, in other countries of, of the region? and that you have a fight ahead to, to change this? Yeah. I think you... you um... Uh, I, you know, I... I, I... I think that yes, we we have too few women in uh, uh, in uh, politics of Belarus and politics in Belarus at the moment. Uh, but I think uh, maybe we will be inspiration for women in the future uh, to be braver in their decisions, to be uh, braver if they want to take part in the politician life of Belarus in the future and uh, everything will be changed. But of course, you know, I, I would like to see more women in uh, uh, politics because we um, bring, I'd say, kindness into this world. Because, uh, for example, at the moment, um, Again, again, I'm coming back to Belarusian um, crisis at the moment, but to Belarusian demonstrations. Uh, so, uh, my opinion that these demonstrations has to be has to be um, principally peaceful, 
And I don't accept any kind of violence at the moment, though a lot of men, you know, they write me, write, they write me so we are being, uh, we are be, being jailed, we are being beaten and tortured. So let's, let's make these demonstrations harder. But, you know, I, I can't make this decision because I, uh, I'm mother and uh, I don't want uh, people to be bitten. I, I, I just can't say this, okay, uh, let's uh, make these demonstrations more brutal because this, this is my responsibility and this will be like a heavy weight on my shoulders. So uh, I think that women can do this rough world of politics, uh, you know, more kind, I, I'd say, maybe I, I have to find another word, but my English is no, 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 not no, no. very good. Yeah. No, kindness is, is a lovely word and, and it's in short supply in the world today. So the more the, the merrier it's. Yeah. So I, I would like that there, were, there will be more women in politics in the future, Belarus. Yeah. Okay, back to politics now and the $64,000 question. Uh, Madeleine, the presidential election is coming up and we are all in a high state of expectations mixed with dread. Uh, well, to stay just on our topic, will Kamala Harris's gender play a role? Did it play a role for Hillary Clinton, for Geraldine Ferraro? Will there ever be a first U.S. woman president? Well, um, you know, the United States always likes to be first. We're certainly not first in this. Um, and I do think that uh, it is important to recognize the fact that there, as I said earlier, there are other countries that have women presidents and women prime ministers. Uh, I hope very much that uh, we will be able to understand the importance of women in high level posts. It certainly has happened in the number of women now in Congress and Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Uh, and I do think that Kamala Harris's uh, not just presence, but activities on the, uh, uh, on the federal level here and her capabilities uh, are going to be noticed uh, and are very important already. Plus, uh, Vice President Biden has made clear that he will have many women uh, in the cabinet. And so it is a matter of constantly putting the issue forward, uh, but it is a, this is a very important election for any number of reasons. And I think that um, I have, my sense is that the America that we're seeing now is not the America that most people want and that there will be more activities by women and that Kamala Harris's presence makes a big difference and that women generally that are on the ballot in a number of different places are being regarded very strongly uh, and that the movement is moving forward, but and I always say this, nobody can take anything for granted, which is why one of the things that are happening in the United States now in these three weeks is everybody is saying to each other and to everybody, we have to vote. We have to see that this is the most important election of our lifetimes. Thanks. Uh, we're coming to a close. We have time for three short questions and three short answers for the questions that came to us on the Facebook for Sviatlana. Uh, are there any Belarusian organized feminist groups and uh, what can we do to help the Belarusian women? Oh, at the moment, you know, uh, it's like a self-organized women group that are like uh, women in red, white, uh, white red white dresses they are face of our demonstrations at the moment and they did everything by themselves and uh, of course we, we all need help at the moment and Belarusian women as well because they have to leave their children at home while they are on the streets so um, if uh, any countries can uh, find uh, a way to help them with uh, with 
some kind of support. So we will be, and these women will be really grateful for this. Thank you. Carolina, who are the most important Polish feminists today? And it's not a loaded question. It's a very difficult question, I believe, because um, it is not about a one or two or even 10 persons. It's more about uh, the consciousness that is being built. I have been asking myself over and over again a question, um, why uh, is it that most enthusiastic towards democracy are uh, those people who live in undemocratic countries? like for example, Belarus or Hong Kong today, or in the past, which marked my biography also very strongly, Maidan and Kiev. Uh, and what can we do in order to preserve this enthusiasm, to preserve uh, the enthusiasm once a country uh, is already a democratic one? Uh, and uh, I also uh, have been thinking about kindness that was mentioned by Svetlana. And I thought about the beautiful book by Milan Kundera, The Unbearable Lightness of Being, when there is this figure of a protest, uh, uh, women helping each other during the protest. And then a, a couple of months or years later, they uh, cross each other in the street and they are not kind anymore because they have left, left the, the hope is not there anymore. So they're not kind anymore. It's, it's a very moving uh, reflection. And I do believe that what we need today is, is, is wise uh, female and male leaders that can preserve the kindness. Now, answering your question, Michal, finally, I do believe that the, the, the people who are actually uh, caring uh, the most for female politics in Poland are not necessarily uh, in the parliament. Some of them are, of course, but I would like to to point at uh, those people, for example, young lawyers who are preserving and fighting for our rule of law in Brussels. Uh, those are uh, um, extremely uh, talented women very often. And I do believe that those are exactly the persons who are fighting for better political community for the future here in this country. Thank you, Karolina. And last to Madeleine, who is your favorite for the first woman American president? Oh, uh, I'm not going to answer that question, uh, <laughs> but I really do think that Kamala is going to be fantastic, but there are a lot of women that are capable of carrying on that role. Uh, and uh, I do think that the time has come for the United States to understand what some other countries have, is that women can lead their countries. Thank you. Well, that's all we had time for, but I think we really didn't waste any time. Thank you so much, Madeleine Albright, Sviatlana Cichanowska, and Karolina Vigura. This is Michael Zantowski on Havel Channel from the Václav Havel Library in Prague. Thank you.